The Metal Gear Solid series is one of the most successful video game franchises of all time. And although the MGS series started in 1998 with the famous PS1 release, the Canon series really started much earlier. In 1987 to be exact, with Metal Gear and then three years later a sequel called Metal Gear 2 Solid Snake. Both games were released for the Japanese MSX2 computer. There was a port for the NES, but there were significant changes made, so I'll be focusing on the English translation of the true original MSX version. The story surrounds a rookie soldier that goes by the codename Solid Snake and works for the mercenary group Foxhound. His first mission is to A. Infiltrate the Fortress of Outer Heaven, which is believed to be housing weapons of mass destruction, B. Rescue Foxhound member Grey Fox who went missing during his infiltration, and C. To investigate whether or not they have a weapon. No big deal, right? I mean, that's a pretty standard entry level mission. You control Snake in an overhead view, and unlike most action games, your objective is to avoid as much confrontation as possible, moving from screen to screen to avoid enemy guards, cameras, and guard dogs. The guards will patrol many of the areas, and if you walk out into their line of vision, they'll spot you and you'll go into alert phase. If one exclamation point appears above the enemy's head, then only the enemies on the screen will come after you, and if you move on to another screen, the alert phase ends. But if two exclamation points appear, enemies from other screens will come in and help, and the only way to get out of this phase is to kill everyone and the reinforcements that get sent in. Since it's a 2D computer game and you'll be using the arrow keys to control Snake, your movements will be like in a grid, which is good for the sneaking parts, but the aiming during the combat parts is a tad awkward. It isn't bad, it's just hard sometimes to accurately aim. You'll start out with no weapons or items, but you'll pick up some as you go along. Items that are held in increments such as ammo and rations will respawn after you leave the room and come back in, so use this tactic every time you find these items. Along the way you'll find POWs being held hostage in different rooms. If you free them, you'll sometimes get vital information from them, and every 5 POWs you'll rescue you'll move up a rank which will allow you to carry more weapons and increase your maximum health. If you kill a POW, your star rank will decrease by 1, so don't be an asshole or you'll pay for it. You'll keep contact with the support team through your transceiver. Throughout the fortress, there'll be a ton of locked doors that you'll need cards with a specific clearance level to get through. One thing that sucks is that you'll need to have that specific card equipped if you want to get through the door. There's no way to tell which card you'll need from the outside. So once you get a lot of cards, you'll have to cycle through each card until one of them works. It can be a bit tedious. Another thing that sucks is that there's lots of guesswork and trial and error parts. For example, sometimes there'll be parked trucks that'll drive off if you get in and send you back to a previous area in the fortress. In one particular part, there'll be like 7 trucks on the screen at once and most of them will send you into a backwards warp zone. Things like this just unnecessarily delay progression. The graphics are pretty good, although most of the areas look the same and the soundtrack kicks ass, even with the limited number of songs. But what makes this game stand out is its innovation and concept, detail, and a pretty deep storyline for the time. So let's take a look through this mission, and keep in mind that since this game's path isn't too linear, you're gonna hear me directing very specifically for a lot of the time. So you'll start out swimming down a river, sneaking into building one of the terrorist base outer heaven. Upon entering, Big Boss will call you to remind you of your first objective, to infiltrate Outer Heaven and rescue Grey Fox. Head north and right and you'll find three parked trucks. Go into the left one to get rations and the right one to get binoculars. With these you can see any connecting screen to the one you're on. So hide behind the center truck until the guard leaves so you can get in and grab the level 1 card. If you go in there before he leaves, he'll jump your ass and you'll have to retreat. So now go back down to where you came from and head right until you get to this door. Equip the level 1 card and go in. The guard in there is sleeping on the job, so sneak in, grab the gas mask on the desk, and head back out. Go back to where you started again and head north until you get to the elevator being guarded by two soldiers and head right. There are three trucks here. Go into the left one to get the handgun, which unfortunately has no ammo yet. Then hide behind the trucks and wait for the guard in the right truck to leave. Why the hell are these guys patrolling inside the trucks instead of around them? Oh well. Go in and get the mines, which you can set anywhere to trap unsuspecting schmucks into walking over them and pretty much ruining their day. Somehow Snake is immune to them. So then go into the center truck and- Whoa, fuck that, never mind. Don't bother with that truck. 
Instead, go back to the elevators and wait for the guards to relieve themselves. Relieve themselves of duty guarding the elevator, I mean. Use the level 1 card to get in and go up to the second floor. Now, these surveillance cameras are constantly shifting and you don't want to get into their field of vision or they'll sound alarm and guards will come after you. In this case, you want the camera to shift down far enough so you can sneak behind this wall and wait for it to come back up. Head down and enter the open door on the left and grab some ammo. Sweet. You'll rescue a POW in the next room, then head left and... Oh my god, what the hell's up with this room? I'm dying. Well, Big Boss phones in to suggest a gas mask since the room is filled with poison gas. Thankfully, you have the gas mask, so equip it and you can walk through safely. Now, you have to equip the level 1 card in order to go through this door so you'll automatically unequip the gas mask and lose a bit of health. Shoot this guard and head into the room on the lower left to free the POW who informs you that another foxhound infiltrated out of heaven and was captured. So move out, head right, and enter this room to discover a rolling metal tube of death. Wait for it to roll to the right, grab the plastic explosives, and hide in this nook until it rolls back to the right. Go back into the entranceway and once it rolls to the left, head right and open the door. Move past these guards and using the level 1 card, head into this room to get to the level 2 card. Head out and go into the other room here using the level 2 card to stock up on some rations. Head north and you'll find an electrified floor that you can't cross. Big Boss tells you to use a remote control missile to take out the panel and get rid of the high voltage. So go back to this room and go through this door using the level 2 card to get the remote control missile. Move on and get into this door on the right using the level 1 card. You'll free a POW who gives you resistance member Diane's frequency, 120.33. You'll call her and she won't answer. Lazy bitch is probably taking a lunch break or something. Continue north to this room with another guarded elevator, then head west into this room with three guards. Use the level 2 card to go into the north room to get the cardboard box. You can use this thing to hide in while the guards are patrolling the area, which has since become a staple of the Metal Gear franchise. Now use the level 2 card to head into the other room and now you'll be back on the other side of the building near where you came up through the elevator. Use the level 2 card to enter this room and you'll have to do battle with 4 guards at once. One shot kills each of them, but you gotta be quick here and keep your eyes open for shots coming from the front and sides of you. I say take out one of the guys on the side first. It's easier to sneak up on both guys up top at the same time, leaving only one left. Once you take them all out, you'll get the silencer, which enables you to fire off your gun without grabbing everyone's attention. Head out and go west to where the cameras are. Head down and open this door with the level 2 card where you'll rescue another POW. Head back up to the elevator you passed earlier, but be sure not to enter the screen up high or get spotted. Take out one of the guards and get into the elevator. Now here you've got a ton of different options of which floor to go to. If you head up to the roof, the wind barrier will knock you on your ass, so Big Boss tells you you need a bomb blast suit. Down below is the basement, first and second floors. The second floor leads to a section with invisible laser sensors that you can't detect yet, and the basement is a clusterfuck maze, most of which you can't even explore yet. It's patrolled by dogs, and you'll end up at doors you can't even open yet. So go down to the first floor and head south. There are three cameras here. Getting around all of them is quite tricky unless you use the cardboard box. Use the level 2 card to get into this room, rescue the POW, and he tells you that Grey Fox is probably located in a secret cell. You'll also move up a class. Continue heading south, enter the room on the east side using the level 2 card and get the submachine gun. Then go into the door on the opposite side to free another POW who tells you that the best way to get into the secret cell is to let the enemy capture you. So head south, move past these guards, and a guard will sneak up on you from behind, capturing you. You'll end up in the cell and Big Boss calls you up, telling you to find Grey Fox's cell, and suggests to check the walls and bust your way out. So punch the walls and listen. When you hear a different sound coming off of it, keep punching until you break a huge fucking hole in the wall. Yeah, Snake is badass. So you'll free Grey Fox in the room that you opened up, who tells you that Metal Gear is capable of firing off a nuclear weapon at any place on the planet, and that the developer Dr. Petrovich is the only person that knows how to destroy it. So now punch a hole in the wall down here and you'll escape. Head east and you'll encounter Shoot Gunner, first boss of the game who according to him has never let anyone escape. So he starts rolling around and firing his spray shot or whatever sporadically. Now all your equipment is gone, but Big Boss encourages you to break down a door as your weapons must be kept in a room nearby. So move quickly behind this wall to avoid his attacks. Then punch the door on the right side to knock it down. Get in and grab all your items. Then go through the door on the left using the level 2 card. Grab the level 3 card and some ammo and now it's time to take this asshole out. Get behind the crates and fire the remote control missile at him. Four shots will take him out. 
If you miss and end up running out, then use your submachine gun and just run right after him and fire like a jackass until he's dead.